it's always a possibility. I'm not sure what, what they think about it, uh, especially Seth. Seth's always been one of those guys that want to kind of, you know, make his own way and, and, and write his own story, create his own narrative. Um, but there's always that possibility. Obviously, the salary cap and all that's going to come into play. Um, but, yeah, I think that there will be a good market for Seth as a shooter. We know how important threes are. And he's one of the best in the league to do it. So, um Always a possibility, but I, I I would probably say a long shot. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, one more question for you before you go. Um, when you look at last season and the way it played out, did you see anything that surprised you, either good or bad? With the Warriors? Yes. Um, I mean, there's always there's good and bad on on every team. Uh, throughout the years so long. Obviously, the way the, the, the training camp started with the uh, incident, that's obviously the worst that could happen. That's the bad. The good is that you were able to, to overcome that. Uh, had a lot of injuries. Um, you know, the bench production wasn't where it, it needs to be, I think, to, to have a championship team. But um, they, they were still had a bunch of uh, veteran guys who'd been there before and knew what it took fought hard, but in the end just didn't have enough. So um, I, I tip my hat to him with the way the season started in training camp to overcome that uh, and, and play the next six months uh, with the injuries and, and what have you to get to the second round when you're not expected to. Um, obviously, with, with their goal to win it like they've done, uh, you know, they they're not satisfied with how it ended, but as a fan, I think uh, that team went as far as it, it as it could. All right, thank you, Seth Dell, and I'll see you uh, next month in Tahoe. All right, and send a little text thread out. Uh, I even got a text thread this morning from Steph's caddy uh, with a Tahoe mention. So it, it started, no doubt about it. Um, we 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 have a great time. Our caddies were all friends. Um, so we're we're we're. We're in golf is an individual sport, but that week there's two man teams. Our caddies have just as much on the line as we do. <laughs> when you look at what Steph's been able to do on the court, especially given that he's now at 35, still a top of the top in the NBA level, just obviously, even from an analyst perspective, but even just from knowing him as well as you obviously do, how long do you think he can stay at this level at, at an all NBA level? I don't see I don't see him slowing down. First, I see the work ethic, um, but it's it's so impressive because then Benny can attest to this. I remember how how I felt at 35, and and I didn't have the mileage uh, that he has. But his work ethic in the summer um, gets him ready for the grind and, and and what he has to go through. Total veteran now. He know what it, he knows what it takes um, day in and day out to get ready. Um, but as, for your, as far as your question, he's 35. I don't want to put a number on it because I know uh, uh, my son, his determination, his dedication to the sport, and his will to want to be the best in the league every single year is far beyond anything I've seen. Um, so at 35, to be able to play, have the year he did, um, and, and, and get stronger when the playoffs came around was impressive. Um, so obviously it's going to be several more years, I think, before you see, uh, any, any kind of fall off. And, and I guess you mentioned the playoffs, obviously he seems very goal oriented to it's a championship or bust in that regard. What do you think this Warriors team kind of needs to do to maybe get back to that point, just from your analysis perspective? Yeah. At this point in his career, if he's just finished his 14th, he's got four rings. It's all about winning championships now. Uh, I think you got to find a way to keep the core together. Uh, and then obviously like every team, you got to find ways to improve, uh, your bench play, whether it's through individual player development or, or you find that one diamond in the rough that you could squeeze in, in the salary cap to make you better and get you over the hump. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really tough situation they're in, uh, cap wise, um, uh, the core players, getting older, but still playing well, but you got to have some, some role players, some help around them to get through the course of the year so that they have enough left in the playoffs to get to that championship uh, level of play that you need. Um, so, yeah, the, the core guys, you can keep them together. They're all driven. They know what it takes. 
and they'll make the guys around them better. You just got to find that those those missing pieces uh, that can can fit the way they play kind of quickly. Appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you. Yeah, but, uh, to sit back at home, you know, pour a glass of wine and, and watch the games <laughs> and, and not have a, a dog in the fight. Uh, I love the way Miami's has come from the playing tournament to the AC to knock off both the top seeds in the East. Um, it's good basketball. Good time. Good, good time. If you're a fan to watch the, the game, but I'm really rooting for Caleb Martin. Uh, he played here with the Hornets, his, his twin brother's still with the Hornets. I watched that guy, how hard he worked uh, to get to not only stay in the league, but now he's a force. He's a player in the league. He shows he belongs. Um, so I'm rooting for him individually uh, to play well. Um, it, it's it's different. It's a different physicality. Um, you know, the, the game has changed. You could say Steph changed the game with the, with the three-point shooting, and uh, everybody wants to see the ball go through the hoop. I think the league has done a good job uh, implementing rules to help that. And I hear a lot of a lot of old timers say uh, the, the game is not as physical as it once was. It's a different kind of physicality, um, and and the players have to adapt. Every every year you're gonna you're gonna have some rule changes where the players have to adapt. They're able, they're able to do that. They're the best in the world at what they do. Um, but I, I I really don't like the old timers saying, "Hey, this guy couldn't play in our my era." This and that. I think NBA players would adapt and play in any kind of era. Uh, regardless of what the rules are or what they're going to be. So, uh, it, yeah, it's still physicality there, still fun to watch. It's just a different game. You know, I, I agree to, to a certain degree. I think, obviously, the rules dictate how physically you can be. When Dell and myself played, you could hand check. There was a lot less possessions because you get be more physical. It was more of a post-up game. You went after the mismatch. Now, if there's a, you know, everyone runs pick and roll with the mismatch, you space them out and you're looking for a three. The big guys are on them. So it's a much different game. So the statistics can get blown up because there's so many more possessions in the game. Obviously, the three ball, the, the, the stretch fours have opened the game up. And the league wanted that. They wanted more spectacular plays. You see more highlights. You see more unbelievable athletic plays. There's more possessions. That's why right now when you're down, you know, when Dell and myself played, if, if you got up by 10, 12 points, you could, you know, work the clock. You could pound it inside. You could work the free throw line. You could work the the foul trouble thing. Nowadays, with the three ball, um, you're never really out of it. You know, it's just, you know, guys can go. You know, you play Golden State. You think you got a nice lead. You're up 10 or 12 points, and boom, within two minutes, a minute and a half, you know, Steph's hit two, Clay's hit one, a steal, Poole's hit one, and the game's tied. I mean, it could happen like that. So rules dictate the physicality. I think one thing people tend to forget is part of the physicality of basketball is they're playing at a faster pace and everybody thinks, well, playing at a faster pace is easy. Well, guess what? When you're playing at a faster pace, you better be in great condition. You're going to run farther. You're going to run quicker. There's a lot more body involved movement instead of pounding it into the great players, Dell and myself, the post-up guys, the David Robinson's that I played with or the uh, Patrick's or Carl Malone or Charles or all those great Post up guys, Elijah Wan. So it was a different era. Uh, the rules changed that. Um, and the three ball has changed it. The analytics have changed it. But don't think for a second uh, the extra speed of the game is easier on your body. You're still having to run, still have to be in great condition. And you have to do that constantly. I think that's one thing that people tend to forget, say, with Golden State. Their body and ball movement is constant, and they have to do that because the less physicality, the more space Steph has, Clay has, the way they run their offense. And it sounds easy, but those guys are in great, great condition, and they have to do it every night the same way, um, which is difficult. So every era is different. Was our era a little more physical? Yes, from a physical standpoint. But I think the game is so unbelievably in a good position now uh, from a TV revenue standpoint, from a global standpoint, um, it's fantastic to see as long as players are working on their craft, improving, being great teammates, and doing whatever they can to help their teams win, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. I think as shooters, we've, we've both been in the zone yeah. Yeah. Uh, two or three times, and <laughs> that, that feeling is like, oh, I need the ball in my hand, and I really don't need to look at the room, just know where it is, and it's going in. Uh, that that's a that's an unbelievable feeling, especially at that level, uh, mm -hmm. when you're playing against the best in the world. Uh, as far as the golf zone, 
Last week I had it to 400 through 13. I thought I was in the zone. Uh, it, and it, it was a zone buster. <laughs> it did not hold up. So now golf is, there's so many different, every, every shot in golf is different. Uh, in the NBA, you can practice your form and, and a lot of your shots are going to be the same, especially when you talk about shooting threes. But golf is so challenging. There's no, no, every shot is different, whether you're chipping, putting, driving, what have you. Uh, that's what makes it so, so competitive and, and such a thrill to play that you just can't master one shot because not one shot's going to be the same. As a 10 year old, Steph, Vinny, and myself never lost a, a shoot around game uh, in Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> Still undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a, a very good friend of Steve Kerr's. He's done a phenomenal job there. Um, but coaches are only good as their players. And, you know, it's hard for Dell, I think, sometimes to speak on it. I've known Steph and, and Seth, is, but especially Steph, um, a long time. I've seen his work ethic. Um, I've seen how he's changed the game. Um, I've seen what a class act he is and what he how he deals with fans, especially at American Century. Um, and everyone pulling at him at every different way and him able to stay focused. I've seen his practices. I've seen his work ethic. I've seen his dribbling things. I've seen all the work that he's put in and it's not easy. Everyone thinks it's easy. It's, 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 it's putting your body through a lot. And, um, I think the warriors are going to be just fine. I think clay has been spectacular coming back from those injuries I think it was unfortunate what happened at the beginning of the training camp last year. Um, but I think if you can keep your core guys together with that type of experience and continue to build around, obviously the ownership group is, is dedicated to winning what they've done um, in the last 10 years or so um, ranks as one of the best runs in, in NBA history. Um, and it was just the perfect timing. And they've, they've incorporated this year, a lot of more young players into the mix that they're trying to find their ways. And as Dell knows, the regular season is one thing, but having that experience in your back pocket as the playoffs come and you get to the first round and the second round is a little different than the third round and teams start taking things away from you and they start making adjustments and they start doing things. And the Warriors have seen all those things with their experience. So I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon, as long as they can stay healthy. I think their ownership group, uh, their front office, although Bob Myers, uh, is a friend and has done a fantastic job. I think Steve and the, and the front office there and the ownership group will figure out a way to keep that core together because they know they still have more in the tank. Um, and the way they can shoot the ball, they're never out of a game. The way their competitive nature, their championship level, um, you know, mentality is only going to be a benefit for them. And it would be hard pressed if they're healthy and they can have their team together with a training camp and with a regular season. Um, it's hard to bet against the Warriors be, just because of their experience and their championship pedigree. So um, I think the Warriors are going to be just fine, but they, they also have to, they knew where they, they weren't at the level they needed to be this year in terms of they were trying and they dug out of some holes and they did it, but they also know what they need to do. And we'll see how the this, this summer treats them. And uh, no doubt having Steph Clay and Draymond as, as your nucleus, if that group can stay together, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Their core is back. Um, every team, whether you win the finals or not, you, you go the next day. You wake up. How do we? How do we get better? How do we stay at this level? Because all other twenty nine teams are going to be gunning for us every single night. So yeah, it's been a great run, good dynasty. But I, it's it's not over until it's over until they've lost. Uh, you know, next the following year they they got to the playoffs with the team they have now. They got to figure out how to keep that core together. Uh, the ownership is dedicated to doing that. Um, so they just got to add some pieces and, and figure out how you get better than Denver. Denver's the best team in the Western Conference right now. That's who you say, how do we get better and beat Denver to get out of the Western Conference and worry about the East when it comes. But uh, I don't do not think their dynasty is over just yet. Um, they're, they're Steph's 35. He's still got a lot in the tank. Clay's got a lot. Draymond, Looney, uh, who's been playing just phenomenal the last couple of years. Um, they, they've got a lot more left in them. We always make the bet on the ride up. We'll, we'll fly into Steph's house and uh, we'll get a car and we, and we, we ride up. That's, that's the, uh, really the, the, 
gets the week started with our caddies right there, uh, understanding what the bet is. And there's a point spread. I actually won because uh, he gave me enough points where he he, uh, he he didn't make up the gap there. We gave Seth entirely too many points uh, mm-hmm. his first time. Last year, Seth was coming off of ankle surgery. That was the first round he played when he got in the Tahoe. So, oh, wow. um, But Steph made these great, uh, like, wrestling WWE belts. Uh, I wish I had time to go in and show you, but I've got the belt uh, up in my man cave right now. I brought it home. Okay. Uh, so that's a big time. That's a big time thing. I was able with my caddy got pictures. We were able to bring that home. I got to bring it back with me, uh, to, to hopefully to bring it back once we win again this year. But, uh, so the belt will be involved. Uh, that's a lot of bragging points, but we'll set the bet on the way up, uh, to Tahoe. And that's, that's a a really fun part when all six of us are combined and and we're trying to figure out who gets what and, uh, what, what the price will be. So no more going in the lake. No, I think that we, we that kind of played out. Yeah, we jumped in the lake several times. Uh, I think uh, we turned the page on that one. Dell 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 brings the uh, the belt because he's not going to win the trophy. That's why. <laughs> That's Uh-oh. right, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, shots fired. <laughs> fired. We're going in the lake regardless. <laughs> Rumor has it that uh, Seth has improved. Is he a threat? You feel he might be a threat. Sorry for laughing with the question, but you might be yeah. you might be a, a threat to the uh, family uh, hierarchy of finishing. Oh, absolutely. Seth has improved. He, he's got he's, he's been had the golf bug, but now his season finished early. He's been working on his game. Uh, we were at a charity uh, uh, the memorial last week. We played in the pro am. All all three of us had a great time there. Uh, Seth's actually at the BMW this week playing, so he's playing some competitive golf. Uh, and he's playing much better. So, yeah, that's why that ride up to Tahoe is very important uh, because we got to look at uh, who's pl- who's playing uh, what and how well they're playing. Do you have room for Marty in that? Uh, we always play. Man? Yeah, we always get the practice rounds with Marty. Um, the You know, Marty and Steph, they're in a league of their own. So they're handing shots uh, to me and Seth. 